The Night Beat starts right now. A drastic rise in the death toll during that devastating week of winter weather in February. State health officials confirming another 59 deaths linked to the weather and power outages. Valentine's Day marked the beginning that snow swept in and people across the state experienced water and power outages. Now the initial death toll back in March stood at 57. Tonight, the latest tally stands at 210 deaths. 14 of those deaths happened here in Bear County, and several wrongful death lawsuits are in play. And when it comes to deaths across the state, most determined to be killed from the exposure to sub-zero temperatures. Others were blamed on carbon monoxide poisoning, and some tried to seek warmth in their cars and use grills as a heating source. And just this summer, ERCOT said they had experienced unexpected plant outages leading to a call for conservation. The coronavirus continues to spread. Many of those without a vaccine now dealing with COVID-19. The positivity rate in Bear County now increasing to 11.2%, nearly double from the week before. It's a rate we haven't seen since January, but Mayor Ron Nuremberg confirming this is not necessarily a surge in cases. 11% represents just about 900 cases this week. And then that means that testing is way, way down. People are who are getting tested are largely, uh, they, they think they have it and they have severe symptoms in some cases, but largely are the unvaccinated. Mayor Nuremberg continues to advocate for vaccinations. Metro Health scheduled to hold a briefing to further put this data into perspective tomorrow at 1.30. We'll continue to bring you the latest both on air and online at KSAT.com. And officials in rural communities like Uvalde also keeping a close eye on COVID cases. Tonight, Uvalde County is looking at a 17.2% positivity rate and increasing quickly. Health officials say education and community support is key in controlling this rising trend. Um, I've got no doubt that the Delta variant is here and it's making younger people sick. Uvalde Health Authority Dr. Jared Reading says vaccine hesitancy is to blame for the spike in COVID case numbers recently. I mean, all the pharmacies have them nowadays. It's not like you can't find them. It's just a matter of people not wanting them. Out of the Uvalde Civic Center, there's no waiting time. About 20 to 30 people show up daily for their shot. Members with the National Guard giving those shots say offering them is pivotal in rural communities across Texas where some are more at risk. Predominantly Hispanic, so as you know, we're a lot of the dialysis patients, diabetics, you know, and it's important. And gearing up for an out-of-country trip, Magda Reyes will feel more at ease now that her grandson is protected. He's active in sports, so yeah, we never know who we are around when we're out there, so it's important. Only about 45% of the people in Uvalde County are fully vaccinated. That means every other person you run into is exposed. Uvalde Memorial Hospital now mandating that all their staff get inoculated after several staff got sick. As we do believe that as healthcare providers, we do need to set the example. Um, uh, you know, it's a way for, I mean, right now, the best tool or weapon we have against COVID uh, is the vaccine. About 94% of the staff are protected, but the rest have until August 6th to file for an exemption or get fired. The hesitancy that people feel, I get free choice. I, I do understand that. At the same time, the vaccine is about freedom. It's about choice that you allow other people to have around you. It's about your ability not to make the people around you sick. At this point, Dr. Reading says people have two choices. You're going to get immunity. You're either going to get it or you're going to get a vaccine. So just prepare to get sick. Dr. Reading says in talking to patients, some of those in the county who were infected were Border Patrol agents who got it on the job. For others, it was family gatherings. Now the county is connecting with schools to host pop-up clinics and other area agencies to educate those that are still on the fence about it. Our coverage continues on that trip from the state capitol to our nation's capital. Dozens of Texas House Democrats say they are buying time by delaying a vote on a measure that would add voter restrictions in Texas. Republicans are responding to that move with an order of arrest. This fight beginning with a break in quorum. 150 lawmakers are in the Texas House. At least 100 are needed to make any votes happen. Dozens of Democrats remain in Washington, D.C. tonight, breaking that quorum, leaving the Texas House at a standstill. 
And now there's a call for those missing lawmakers to be arrested. Representative Diego Bernal says he's been turned into a fugitive in a tweet saying in part, quote, Republicans want to send DPS to our homes and the homes of our loved ones to drag us back to Austin, end quote. DPS jurisdiction does not expand beyond state lines, and some Republicans hope lawmakers decide to return on their own. Uh, will, by their own will, choose to come back and do the work. That's what we're elected to do so. That was the oath we swore to. Uh, those are the rules we adopted. Uh, Texas Democratic lawmakers say action, they are fighting for voter rights and action, plan to stay in Washington, D.C. until at least the end of this special session. I mentioned this session ends on August 7th, and we can't uh, hold this tied back forever. Uh, we're buying some time. We need Congress and all of our federal leaders to use that time wisely. That time meant for Congress to consider federal legislation to intervene and counteract voter restrictions. But Democrats in the U.S. Senate still don't have the support needed to even start a debate on voting rights legislation. 21st century Jim Crow assault is real. It's unrelenting. And we're going to challenge it vigorously. The proposal in Texas would impact mail-in voting procedures, 24-hour polling locations, and drive-through voting, create new ID requirements, and support partisan poll watchers. Republicans have said the measure keeps voting honest, a similar defense used by former President Donald Trump, who falsely claimed the election was stolen. We are happy to work on bipartisan proposals that expand the right to vote, that make it easier to vote and harder to cheat in the state of Texas. But that is not what we saw even at the outset of this process when none of the amendments offered by my colleagues were considered in committee. There are some Republicans who say they are willing to compromise. There are also 10 other items on the agenda for this special session. Those items are also on hold for the time being. Governor Greg Abbott has said he plans to continue to call special sessions until at least next year. A mangled mess of metal and several people killed. San Antonio police responding to this wreckage in the backyard of a home on Babcock Road, not far from Chase Hill Boulevard this morning. Investigators believe the SUV was speeding down a curvy road before it rolled over and crashed. Three people flew from the car and died. Another was taken to the hospital in critical condition. The investigation into this crash continues tonight. Units of blood are critical when it comes to saving lives in emergencies. The shelves at the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center have units of blood, but it's not enough because we continue to experience a critical shortage of blood. The night team's Tiffany Huerta spoke with a San Antonio woman who says a selfless donor saved her, saved her life. We always had so much fun together, and my mother especially. Always worked hard to make holiday special, memory special. Laura Burris' life changed in 1983. She was in the car with her parents when all of a sudden... We were struck by another vehicle. My mother was actually killed upon impact. She died on scene. My father was thrown from the car. Laura suffered a broken foot and numerous cuts on her face, arms and chest. And I'm here today, um, talking to you today because of the donations of donors at that time and place. She received a blood transfusion that saved her life. Laura has dedicated her entire life to donating blood. It's an honor to be able to donate. James Randall with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says there is a need for blood donations to help all types of patients, including trauma patients. So these are the emergencies that you think of, a gunshot, a car accident, uh, someone uh, loses a limb, but then you also have regular medical needs. So you have uh, oncology patients, so people going through cancer treatment. This is about a day supply for our entire community. While it's filled in the front of the shelves, take a look right behind me, completely empty in the back. We really need to be collecting 600 units a day to help us build to our seven day supply mark where we're targeting. We would like to have these shelves with seven days worth of supply to consider that adequate here in our community. The donor room also looked emptier than usual this afternoon and that's concerning. Hospitals have opened back up. They started increasing the number of medical procedures that they're doing which has increased their need for blood products. For Laura, she hopes her story can help save lives. It's my honor to donate. Randall says they need all blood types, but they really need type O red blood cells. He says this is the highest usage in our hospitals right now. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News.
And the next community drive will happen tomorrow at the San Antonio Food Bank from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can still schedule an appointment to donate by calling 210-731-5590 or visiting SouthTexasBlood.org. It's still ahead on the night beat of delay and emotions during day two of the Otis McCain trial. The family of the slain San Antonio police detective back in court. We take you through today's testimony coming up. And Homeland Security getting a major medical delivery. The shots they're expected to dole out next on the night beat. It calls to vaccinate migrant detainees making their way to the Department of Homeland Security. 10,000 Johnson and Johnson vaccine doses are in the hands of the agency. Immigration and Customs Enforcement say vaccinations are ramping up at detention facilities. This after dealing with nearly 20,000 confirmed cases and nine deaths. The American Civil Liberties Union had called ICE's vaccine strategy for detainees a failure. Three whistleblowers urged the Biden administration to do more to vaccinate migrants who are in custody. Technical difficulties causing a delay in a major capital murder trial. Day two of the trial of Otis McCain got underway this afternoon with new videos showing the moments leading to the death of San Antonio Police Detective Benjamin Marconi. In addition, emotional testimony from those who say they saw McCain shoot him. After a short delay, the Otis McCain trial resumed on day two with SAPD Deputy Chief Hector Salas back on the stand. He guided the jury through interior video from Detective Marconi's patrol unit showing the final moments of his life. This video that we're talking about shows the occurrence as it's actually occurring. That video, which we won't show due to its graphic nature, leaving Marconi's family in tears and causing a jury member to leave the courtroom, which is why a second video showing a different view drew objections from the defense. One of the jurors became physically ill and had to leave the courtroom and had to get some kind of recovery to her before she could return. So the idea that this wouldn't be prejudicial is ridiculous. Judge Ron Rangel ultimately allowing it to be shown before witness testimony continued. Okay. You remember that day? Yes, sir. And can you tell the jury, Mr. Martinez, why you remember that day? Oh, um, I've been traumatized when, when it happened. Ricky Lee Martinez was traveling with family when he was pulled over by Marconi. Moments before he was shot in the head, which Martinez says he witnessed from his rearview mirror. What was going through your mind at this time? My family and I not making it. Following Martinez on the stand, a via bus driver, Juan Carlos Enciso, who says he also saw McCain kill Detective Marconi as he drove by. He stuck something in the unit, and I just heard one one uh, gunshot. And while Enciso identified McCain as Marconi's killer in the courtroom, the defense pointing out he was not able to during an initial lineup back in 2016. And the one that you checked off was, I was unable to identify any of the persons in this lineup. And that's the one that you checked off first. Is that correct? That is correct. I made a mistake. And court will resume tomorrow morning at 9. You can follow along with us on our live stream at ksat.com or watch on the KSAT TV app available wherever you stream. Check out live cam. You know, there were some areas. Oh, that's great. San Fernando Cathedral. Beautiful. Yeah, doing one of the displays that they do on the walls there. And what a night it is to be outside. It's 76 degrees and there's a breeze and out it's there. It's in July. Right now. Wait, this I know. Is July, right? This is not <laughs> this is not July temperatures. It does not feel like it. And in fact, uh, it is even more shocking when you compare where we were at this day last year. And that's where I want to start the forecast with last year's record smashing high temperatures. 107 in San Antonio. That is the hottest July temperature ever on record for San Antonio and Del Rio last year hit 112 degrees, which ties for their hottest temperature ever. So this is where we could have been this year today, but instead we only saw a high temperature of 89 degrees. 
I don't know about you, I'll take the 89 and a couple of passing showers like we saw today over those record high temperatures. Even in Del Rio, it only got up to 95 degrees. That's cooler than their average high temperature. And in the upper 80s in Kerrville, New Braunfels, and Hondo as well. Right now outside, it is so pleasant out there. It's 76 degrees at the airport. We've got a nice breeze from the south, 77 in Pleasanton and 74 in New Braunfels. It's muggy, yes, but not oppressively so. Now, I want to show you uh, what happened today with the scattered rain that was in the area. We got up into the 80s, but just before we could get into the 90s, the scattered rain pushed an outflow boundary through rain cooled air. We dropped down into the 70s and not everybody got rain, honestly, but everybody got the rain cooled air. And I'm showing you this because tomorrow's forecast is going to be fairly similar to today. I don't think that rain will be as widespread as it was today for those folks out there. But again, we'll be having some rain cooled air in the afternoon and that is going to limit our high temperatures. Here's a look at the uh, the radar estimated rain. You can see that area is along 281 inside of 1604 missed out on the rainfall and along I 10 missed out on the rainfall as well. But some spots got uh, up to an inch of radar estimated rain out toward Converse and into Guadalupe County near Seguin and New Braunfels about a quarter to half an inch of rain. Carnes County got too much of a good thing. Carnes City saw a little bit of minor street flooding from an inch of rain and then across parts of the hill country and even out toward Uvalde. Uvalde's missed out on the rain the last several days and they got about half an inch to an inch of radar estimated rain. Now it's quiet out there right now, uh, but uh, we are going to be seeing uh, the sea breeze really kick in tomorrow. And if the sea breeze is cooler and a little bit more moist, and that's why during the afternoons, we're gonna have some redevelopment of a few showers along the coastal plain. And then we'll watch those to see if they have enough oomph to make it to that I-35 corridor. And I do think a few will, so we're gonna Going to call it a 20 to 30 percent chance for isolated to widely scattered showers and even a few rumbles of thunder tomorrow afternoon. But much like today, with the loss of daytime heating, once we see the sunset, the rain chances go down and then we see a bit of a repeat on Thursday as well. Again, these showers are not really going to cause any issues. We're not expecting severe weather. They're just going to help to prevent our temperatures from soaring to unbearable levels. It'll be 84 at noon, 90 in the afternoon, 30 percent chance for scattered for isolated to scattered showers and a few storms. Southeast winds at 5 to 10. We'll have more isolated rain on Thursday. On Friday, it'll hold off on the weekend. Only a stray shower possible. So we'll finally get a weekend where we can do some summertime activities. We've had to battle a, a few showers and storms over the weekend, but that does not look like the case this weekend. One thing I will say, though, is that the Saharan dust, we're likely to see another plume move in on the weekend. That'll cause some allergy-like symptoms for some folks and the heat index value is going to make it feel close to 100 over the weekend. Uh, so uh, yeah, summery weekend in store for us after some unseasonable rain out there this week. Do you know Patty got rained on today? <laughs> in Yavaldi. I know, her hair looks really good. She does, way to go. <laughs> for being rained on today, I have to, I have to say Teach that. Teach me your ways. Thanks. All right, Team USA actually won a game. Yeah, it tonight, takes a little right? pressure off now because they dominated really from start to finish. When we come back after two exhibition losses, Team USA rebounds tonight. We'll show you how they did it. And we continue with our top five priorities for the Dallas Cowboys in training camp, including that young man right there, getting him back on track. Surprising back-to-back -back losses, Team USA returned to form against Argentina this afternoon. Kevin Durant came out firing with a pair of threes to get things started. The first one from the left wing, and then from the right, he finished with 17. Bradley Beal also poured in 17. Here's three of those at the corner for an 11-point lead. A little later, Draymond Green gets a long rebound, throws it down court to Durant, who finishes with a two-handed punch. USA up by 24 after one. Kelton Johnson making the most of his minutes in the second quarter. He tacks a paint, takes a lot of contact, missed shot, but on the mark. He gets his own board and put back. He had four points and five rebounds in 14 minutes of play. This game was never close. Zach Levine gets it ahead to Bam out of bio for the slam. Then Levine takes to the sky and throws down the dunk plus the foul. USA rolls Argentina 108 to 80. After the game, Pop was pleased with his team's energy level. Tonight, I thought we maintained that pretty much throughout the game. Uh, so hopefully that's a sign that we are getting a little better condition. And we also have to get rhythm. You know, some of the players you know, they haven't played in a while, uh, let alone practicing together. They haven't, 
shot the ball. They haven't been doing a whole lot. So uh, these moments uh, to play these games are huge for us. And next up, a rematch with Australia on Friday at 5 p.m. San Antonio time. The Milwaukee Bucks will look to get even with the Phoenix Suns tomorrow night when they host game four of the NBA Finals. That's after they rocked the Suns in a route game three, 120 to 100, behind Giannis Antetokounmpo's second straight game of over 40 points. Besides the outstanding performance of the Greek freak, the Bucks also successful with their defense, limiting Devin Booker to just 10 points, was one of seven from the field. Can they do it again is a big question. Booker, you know, I think... Uh... You know, lots of different guys guard him. He's a great challenge, keeping him off the free throw line, keeping him off the three-point line. Um, I'm sure he'll be ready to go. We, we got to be ready to match, um, you know, that going into the next game. Now, one of the reasons for the Suns' loss in Game 3 of Milwaukee was points in the paint. Phoenix was outscored 54-40, to 40, most in part for the aggressive play of Giannis, but another contributing factor was the early foul trouble of DeAndre Ayton that cost him a big man in the middle, limiting him to only 24 minutes on the court. What can his teammates do to protect him from being targeted by the Bucks? He's a big part of our team, especially he's the anchor of our defense. You know what I mean? I feel like any team would love for him not to be on the court offensively and defensively. So, um, yeah, we, we got to protect him better, you know, and make sure that we're, we're showing that wall. All right, it continues tomorrow at Game 4 in Milwaukee, 8 p.m. live here on KSAT 12. Ezekiel Elliott, one of the Cowboys' top five priorities in training camp next. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. One week from the day the Dallas Cowboys arrive in California to return to their training camp in Oxnard after being banned from travel last year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. To get you ready for our coverage of camping with the Cowboys, we've been going over the Cowboys' top five priorities going into training camp. Today, we feature running back Ezekiel Elliott. The Cowboys must get Zeke back to his production from 2016, 18, and 19, where he rushed for over 1,300 yards each season. After having his worst season as a running back with the Cowboys last year, he's coming off a career low. 979 yards, only six touchdowns, only average four yards a carry and just over 65 yards a game. And worse yet, he fumbled the ball five times, lost four, which is a career high. Some of that can be explained by Dak Prescott being part of only five games due to his horrific ankle injury and the injuries to three of the Cowboys' top offensive linemen, Tyron Smith, Lael Collins, and Zach Martin. Smith missed all but two games last season after undergoing neck surgery. Collins missed the entire season after finally having surgery on his hip. And Martin was in and out of the lineup with injuries playing in only 10 games. Training camp will also be the first time we hear from Zeke since he has kept away from many interviews during the OTAs and mandatory minicamp, perhaps because of legal problems he has due to his dogs getting loose. Texas Football Magazine has hit the newsstands with Judson High School's own DeMarvin Leal as part of the All Aggie cover this season. Now, on Monday, we broke down the top teams in the state in Class 6A, according to Dave Campbell's magazine. Today, Class 5A in both Division I and Division II. And we start with the Southside Cardinals, who are the highest-ranked team in Class 5A, Division I, number 22, in part because we have quarterback Richard Torres as one of their five players back on offense and six on defense off a team that went 9-2 and two overall, 5-1 and one in district last year. Torres announcing just weeks ago he's committed to play for Nebraska in class 5A division 2 the highest ranked team out of the top 25 is Bernie Champion with 12 starters back of a team that went 7 and 3 4 and 1 in district so here's our breakdown according to the magazine in division 1 just one team in the area state ranked that's at number 22 Southside division 2 we have two teams that are state ranked number 15 Champion number 24 Alamo Heights is hard to believe we're just over 40 days away from the start of the high school football season after what we went through last year with the pandemic having to start the 1A and 4A schools and the 5A and 6A schools at different times. Now everybody starts at the same time. I cannot wait for football season to get here. Back to After normal. last year yep. with no fans. And so, yeah, let's get back to normal. You got it. Thanks, Greg. Pretty exciting. All right, we'll be right back. We want to get you to some breaking news tonight. Two people taken to the hospital. Police now investigating this crash near Guadalupe and South Brazos on the city's west side. Yeah, police said the driver of a black sedan taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. The woman in an SUV also in the hospital. She's expected to survive. You can actually see part of the traffic light down in the road. Police are still looking into what caused this crash.